Here are some um, seal facts that you might find interesting. The other things about them is they can um, sleep underwater and we call that bottling. They sleep just under the surfaces with their noses just sticking out. And when they sleep, only half their brain will shut down. They can hold their breath for up to 30 minutes and just as we've seen how much they like to eat, they love to um, eat 6% of their body weight every day. That's about 50 burgers. That, so imagine sitting down to a meal of 50 burgers every day. They have to eat so much because they have to keep themselves warm in the water. We all know it's really cold in the sea at the moment. And they spend most of the time in the water. To keep them warm, they have a lovely layer of fat called blubber. And this is a bit like the white fat on your bacon. It keeps um, them really, really nice and warm. And they can live up to um, almost uh, up to 45 years old is the oldest one that's been um, recorded. All our seals are protected. They're protected by the Max um, Law in the Wildlife Act 1919. And since um, this act came into force, our seals have been going up in numbers. In 2007, the last survey that was conducted around the island, we had about 400 seals in Manx water. And the work that we're doing on the calf also shows an increase in seal numbers. Mm. However, it's not all good news because we do have threats to our seals. As you can see from this picture, marine litter is a real problem. And we do have this problem on island. Currently at the moment, we've got a seal that comes up at Langness with a plastic ring around its neck. Unfortunately, we can't help this individual because um, of the situation it's in. It's on rock, so we can't dart it um, so that we can get to it. Otherwise, it would just swim away. So unfortunately, we've just got to wait until that poor individual gets too tired or is too poor to swim away from us. But down here as well, you'll see a picture of a, one of our seal pups laying amongst rubbish on the car for man. And it is a very real problem. Not only does it get wrapped around them, but they can also ingest it. But also there's toxins in plastic, things like PCB and DDT um, that gets into their food and then gets into their blubber. And the trouble is it concentrates on these blubber la um, layers. So it's not very good at all for them. So the, um, on the Isle of Man, the Manx Wildlife Trust carries out um, annual sea surveys on the Calf of Man. And this is a very small island to the south of the island, the main Isle of Man. And um, it's a very popular area for seals to haul out and give birth to their pups. So for about six weeks every autumn, um, we send volunteers out to go on the calf. Now we talked before about how each seal has different spot patterns and it's a very much like our fingerprints. So what happens in these surveys is they um, take lots and lots of photographs of the seals seal that they find hauled out. So they have to take both sides of the seal and um, the front part of the seal. And here's one that we have on, on the calf called Heartbeam. Um, you can see why she's called Heartbeam, because of just here and just here. And she's one of the many female grey seals that have given birth to pups on the calf of man. And she's been returning to the calf since 2009. So she's had various pups. And as we go through the pictures, you'll see in 2012, she had a pup called Lily. 2015, she had a pup called Olga. 2013 was a pup called Mabel. 2011, she had Cook. And 2010, she had a pup called Jelly. So this sort of work is very, very important. And one of our pups, um, we sent all our photographs to um, Cornwall um, Wildlife Trust. And they've managed to make a match. Now, this is really, really fascinating and almost groundbreaking work because this is what we previously thought of as our seal 
going to. We thought that they stayed mainly around the Irish Sea. Um, they went over to Anglesey, up to Scotland, but we certainly didn't believe that they would travel anywhere near as far as Cornwall. So it's a real breakthrough to us to know that this um, female goes down. She's um, known as um, Liddy Bell down in Cornwall, and she only comes back up to the calf to have her pups every year. Part of the work that our um, seal pup um, volunteers do is they have a look at how the pups are growing, how they're getting on, on the calf. So this first stage here is between zero and two days. Okay, it's so the very first day, the pup's just been born. I don't know if you can see here where my finger's pointing, but there's a little pink tube here, okay? So they still have the um, umbilical, umbilical cord still attached to them. And they're very, very like um, human babies at the moment in that they don't have strong enough muscles and lack coordination, so they can't lift their heads off the ground. Often this fur is stained yellow, or um, you might even see um, a bit of blood as well from it. But you can see that they're covered in this white natal fur. The next stage on, and you can see, just like human babies now, it can hold its head up, it's developed more coordination, very similar to a toddler. Okay, it's got a smoother body lines. You can still very much see a neckline. You can see lots and lots of wrinkles on it. Okay, but the umbilical cord has wasted away. So that's three to seven days old. This next one, which looks very jolly, looks like he's laughing. Um, they just feed up on their mum's milk. Their mum's milk is about 50% fat, which is just absolutely incredible. And they pile on the weight. They have to, to because they um, are very vulnerable out on the land. They need to get into the sea as soon as they can, but they need that layer of blubber to protect them. So you can see now from that first that, um, stage there to this stage here, it's really filled out. There's not these wrinkles here at all, okay? They're looking very, very round. And the neck is definitely beginning to disappear. It's just one big blob, okay? Um, that one's about seven to 15 days old. That's stage three. Stage four, it looks very similar to the other one. But this time, its its stomach is really bulging out there. Okay, you can't see any form of neckline at all. It's completely gone. Okay, but can you see here, the difference is, you're beginning to see that grey seal um, skin texture that you're used to seeing in seals. They're beginning to lose and molt that white fur. Okay, so that's 16 to 20 days. And the final stage here, you can see this stage, they, they've fully molted all the white fur and you're beginning to see the spot patterns. They're capable of um, swimming and they've been weaned off their mother's milk. And you can definitely see a spot um, pattern emerging. So we have a bit of a quiz here. You're going to become some of our SEAL volunteers and we're just gonna move over and I'm gonna just take you up this line of photos of seal pups. And we're going to have to work out which is the first stage. So remember, we're looking for one that, that can't hold its head up. We're looking for it with maybe an umbilical cord um, standing at out. Okay, so have a little look. Look at the letters. So we've got A, we've got C, D, E, and B. Let's just have one last little look. So, the top one B is holding its head up, so is E, so is D, so is C, definitely holding its head up. So A isn't holding its head up at all, and if you look very carefully, can you see that umbilical cord just um, sticking down there? So that's our first stage. So we'll put it up in our pile. So the next stage, it's got a very, very skinny neck, okay? And you'll see wrinkles on it, basically. So which one, it's not looking particularly fat, which one can you see wrinkles on, and which one is just covered 
in white fur. It just doesn't look fat at all. Okay, you can definitely see a neck on it. Oh, C's very plump, isn't he? Okay. Well, that would be E. So that's our stage two development. So that would be three to seven days old. Okay. So let's look at the next one. So we're looking for a pup, okay, that's beginning to fatten up. Um, it's barrel shaped with its neck and torso blended in a single blob. Okay. It won't have lost any of that white um, natal fur at all on it. So this one's definitely losing fur, isn't it? And that one hasn't got any on at all. So it is B. So that's stage three. And that is 7 to 15 days old. So now we're looking for stage 4. And that's a really quite a fat, bulging torso. Um, no real neckline. Um, but it's beginning to lose its fur. It's quite an easy one, isn't it, really? It's D. Can you see it's lost its fur from its head? So that makes it easier. So our last stage, our stage 5, which is 18 to 25 days old, there you can see there's no white fur on it. It's not particularly easy, um, and our volunteers get lots and lots of training. So can you see? So this zero to two days old. This one's three to seven days old. This one is seven to 15 days old. This one's 16 to 20 days. And this one's 18 to 25 days and it's becoming quite independent from its mum. In the autumn, we always get lots of phone calls about um, seals on the shore. And it's always a problem, what do you do? Is it, is it in distress or isn't it? So what do you do if it's on the shore? So we've done this little um, graphic here to try and help you. Is it alive? Okay. If it's alive, yes. Can you see any visible injury on it? Please don't get too close. Remember, if they lift their head, you've gone close enough. Don't go any further. Okay. If it's injured, contact the Manx um, MSPCA. Okay. Or um, if it isn't, then have you seen it on the beach for more than four hours. We would actually say up to six hours now, okay? And because what happens with seal pups is often they are um, left by the mums. The mums aren't particularly good. They'll swim off, they go off and get their own food and they leave them for very long periods of time, often for a complete cycle of water. Now, seals are very lazy because it takes them a lot of effort to get down to sea. So often they'll wait for the high tide to come back up so they um, can get off. If it's not been six hours. Do nothing. Just monitor it. Just make sure people are aware it's there. Keep people away, particularly if they've got dogs. Um, and also contact um, the Max Wildlife Trust because um, we have a whole team of volunteers who are quite happy to go out and sit and keep an eye on them for us. Okay, what do you do if you see one that's um, obviously not alive? If it has a cross painted on it, that means that it's already been seen by the Max Wildlife Trust. Now, the Max Wildlife Trust are paid by DEFA to um, go and monitor um, seals. So we get all the information about the seals that uh, have unfortunately died, but it gives us a lot of valuable information. So if it doesn't have a cross on it, it means that nobody from our team has been to see it. So you need to get in contact with us. If it does, you don't need to do anything. What happens is um, when we've dealt with the seal, we will phone up DEFA and they will come and remove the body because obviously um, it a, becomes a bit of a biohazard. So um, please try and remember this. I will hold it up a little bit so we can get the whole of um, the poster in. But just try and remember and if in any doubt, just give us a ring and a member of our team can come and help sort it out.